What's up everyone? Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jonathan. We are doing another Adobe Illustrator tutorial and if I'm just gonna get this out of the way right now, make sure to click on the like button for the YouTube algorithm. We are here for another Adobe Illustrator tutorial, so let's get started with the tutorial. Once you are in Adobe Illustrator, I'm working on a 1920 by 1080 document. I'm just gonna center this up, fill the artboard by hitting Control Zero on your number pad. Today's is going to be a little more involved, so if you need to, feel free to pause at any time, catch up, or rewind. If something doesn't quite work for you, feel free to leave a comment below, and I will do my absolute best to help. So far, I've responded to every single comment on every single video, so let's get started. We are going to start by doing a couple of strokes, so you can grab your pen tool or hit P on your keyboard, click and drag this over, somewhere's about there, and then down to about here or so. Hit escape to get out of your pen tool. Grab your selection tool, go back to your stroke, and we are going to crank this up 16, 60, 100. Uh, let's do 25. And 25 looks good. Let's let's see what 35 looks like. And 35 looks good. So now we are going to uh, click on click on the object or click on your stroke click expand click OK expand and then once you've done that grab your selection tool by hitting a on the keyboard and we are going to around oops, I don't want all of these corners I just want this one so make sure to just click on this anchor point and we can actually hold shift and click on this one we're gonna do both of these so now make sure you are in your direct selection tool, not your selection tool, your direct selection tool. Click on this anchor, hold shift, click on this anchor, and then drag this down. We're gonna round this edge off. Somewhere is about there probably. And then we're going to do the same thing with this one. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're actually going to click on this anchor and drag it up some, so it's a little further of a, a draw. We're going to do the same thing on this one. Drag it down a little bit. Somewhere's about like so. And then since we are creating the letter Y, I suppose you saw the thumbnail and that's why you're here. We can click on this guy. We can grab our regular selection tool and we are going to just use colors within this palette so everyone can follow along. I'm not going to use any custom colors. I will pause so you can see the uh, RGB codes that way if I when we're making uh, some colors later so don't worry about that now we're going to grab our pen tool again click off that subject off that sh off. click off that object grab your pen tool by hitting P again and we're gonna click down here somewheres and we're gonna go all the way up here and we're gonna do somewheres about like so hit escape to get out of that then we're going to swap these colors around, but we want this to be black so we can see it. And then we're going to do this very similar here. We're going to come up this edge and then we're going to come back over to there. So we're going to grab our pen tool. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see. We're going to click here and then we're going to click somewhere up here. And we're going to do a nice shape kind of like so back out a little bit I'm zooming in and out by holding alt on your keyboard and using the scroll wheel on my mouse and then to move around on the artboard I am holding the space bar and then just left clicking and dragging around so now grab your selection tool actually we're going to click on both of these uh, paths by holding shift click on both of these now click holding alt and shift drag these over out of the way and now select both of these some uh, all of these objects go over to your pathfinder tool and hit divide and now ungroup these and you should have two shapes although it did something super funky so I have no idea why it did that we are going to select all of this stuff and we're gonna put this back together by using the shape builder tool so we want this shape to be one piece this shape to be one piece, this shape to be one piece, and all of this to be one piece. So now go back to your selection tool, let's see what this looks like. Okay, that looks like the way it's supposed to do, so if yours did something like that, you can fix that by using your shape builder tool, and then 
clicking and dragging through the shapes that you want to change. And now we are going to make our stroke so we can select both of these and then click, hold shift, drag these back over. And now they should line back up and lock in place. Now let's go to our stroke properties over here. Go to our stroke. We're gonna make this a little bigger, not quite that big. Probably we'll do five or six, depending on how big your shape is. Five is looking good for me. We're gonna click into the stroke right here. And now we're going to go down to profile. And then we're gonna click on this one right here. That way it's this curves back, it tapers off as we get to the point. And then we're going to go to a gradient. Click inside the shape or on the fill. Sometimes if you have the fill selected still, it won't let you do anything. So make sure you're on your stroke. We are just going to do not something like that. That looks super weird. Oh, it's on radial. That's why it looks super funky. So make sure you just have it on your linear gradient. And then we are going to make both of these, this color right here, drag that over. We're gonna make this a little bit uh, brighter. Let's go over into your hue and saturation and we're going to decrease the saturation some. Should give us a little bit of a brighter. Uh, yeah, we'll just do that. We'll stay in this color and we'll just grab this over. We're gonna make this actually a little bit darker. Grab this one and bring this down some. Wait, it stands out against the background or the other shapes. And we are going to, we're actually going to move this stroke over here. Even if we have to create another one of these, we're gonna put this over here in the middle somewhere. So this one's good. We just need to move this one. Oh, it didn't select that, that's why. So move this over into the middle, click and drag this over here. Now we have this kind of a shiny spot and that's what we want for later. And now we're gonna click on this shape, hit Control C, Control F. And now we're just going to grab our gradient tool. Oops, get off of the stroke. See, I clicked on the stroke. Make sure you have the fill selected. Add a gradient. We are going to make it that blue color. We're also going to make this side 0%. And we actually want the gradient down like this, so that actually looks good. Hit, click on this shape, Control C, Control F. And now you can just hit I on your keyboard, select your eyedropper tool, and now you can click on this uh, shape over here. Now hit G for your gradient. Drag that up somewhere it's about like so. Same thing for this bottom shape. Control C, Control F. Hit the I key. Click select the gradient. Hit G. Now we're going to drag this up like so. All right, that looks good. So now one other thing we are going to do is we are going to select this piece and then we're gonna hold Alt and Shift and drag this over. And now we are going to add a stroke to this one. We're gonna crank this up. Probably gonna do somewhere upwards of like not 40. That was way too far. Let's see what 30 looks like. 30 probably looks good. So now you can go to object and expand, and then you can just expand the stroke, click OK, and now select everything. Go over to your Pathfinder tool and hit divide. Grab your uh, direct selection tool and click and hold this and drag this over. So now you should have a piece that is smaller than the rest of this, and then you can just delete this stuff. So now you can grab your selection tool Go to white and black on the gradients. Change this to white. We're also gonna change this down to like 40%. We're gonna change this to zero. 
don't really feel like that changed. 40 and zero. Okay. And let's do something like so. And that looks good for that piece. Now we're going to do the same thing for this one. So click, hold Alt and Shift, drag this over, change the stroke. We can probably get away with 40 on this one because it's a little bit bigger of a piece. And now select that object, go to object, click expand, just the stroke, click OK. Make sure you have everything selected. Now go to divide. And now you should be able to go to your direct selection tool and click and drag this out. Not sure what happened to the stroke there, but put that back. Let's go back and see if we can fix that. So when did that happen? When we expanded the stroke? So go to expand, just the stroke, click OK. Yep, that's when that happened. So now we'll, let's see if we can fix that. Actually, I bet you, so let's see what happens here. So we expanded that, we can click and drag this out. Oh. Select everything, divide, Click and drag this over. I bet you we can just delete these anchor points. There we go. And that's gonna be round enough for me. Select everything else, delete all that. Click and drag this back over where it should be. Somewhere about like so. And now hit I on your keyboard. Select this gradient up here and then you can change which way you want this gradient to come from. Do something like so. And now one of the last things that we're going to do is we're going to grab our ellipse tool. We're going to create a shape that's something like so. Go over to our gradient tool, go up to white and black, go to radial, hit G on your keyboard to adjust the gradient. Make this about like so and then, oopsies, drag this up so that it's like that. Now hit V on your keyboard so you can get out of that. Go up to your opacity panel or your transparency panel, whichever, however you want to get here. And then go to color dodge. And you can drag this over. Rotate this. So it's on there. You can adjust the size accordingly. That looks good. So now click on this one, right click, go to transform, reflect, and apparently that does the exact same thing. Weird. Click OK. Click and drag this down over here onto this one where that whiter spot was. And then rotate this around so that it makes sense. Something like so. Now grab your selection tool, select both of these, or all of that. Right click, click group. Right click, go to transform, reflect, and we want vertical this time. Click OK. Click and holding shift, drag this over. We can just line this up on the artboard. Whoops. Group these together and now line them up on the artboard. Wow, I nailed that. I'm actually going to bring this up a little bit. <coughs> now we're going to right click on this one, transform, reflect, and we're going to do horizontal and hit copy. Click and holding shift, drag this down so it's about down like so. Oops. Drag it down here. And now we're going to grab our rectangle tool and drag over this. We already have a gradient from when we made our previous one. So we just need to edit this gradient. We're gonna click right here in the middle and drag this over like so. And then we're just gonna drag this in a little bit. We're gonna drag that in some, somewhere about like that. 
and then select everything below that. And actually probably move this down a little bit. That looks pretty good. So now select all of those. If you still are in your transparency panel, if you don't have your transparency panel, just go to uh, Windows, go down to Transparency, or hit Shift Control F10 apparently, and then click Make Mask. And now that will create what will look like a reflection of those upper pieces. And now we are going to create our background. So we're going to just grab our rectangle tool, go up here to intersect, drag this over. We're just going to make this a black color. We're also going to hit control shift left bracket and that will send that object all the way to the back. And then hit control two to lock that in place. It looks like we have a little bit of extra leftover shapes, so we're going to grab our direct selection tool and click on these little pieces and delete these. So if you see any more, whoops, you see any more pieces that are weird from when we've expanded the shapes and the strokes and stuff, sometimes stuff can get left over. So that looks good. I think I want to change the gradient on this one. So it's something like so. Drag this down some. Hmm. Nah, I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. Leave it alone. All right, now we're going to go over here and grab our ellipse tool. We have our blue color, and we are in our ellipse tool. And then we're just going to make a shape, kind of like so. Drag this over so it's lined up. And I guess we are going to do a gradient. We'll just start over. Go to our blue. We're going to make this a radial gradient. G. And squash this down. We can drag this out so it fills up the whole shape. Drag this down a little bit more. So it fills up that whole shape, drag it down like that. That looks pretty good. We're going to send this to the back, so hit control left bracket and control left bracket one more time. That way it's behind those and above that one. It's lined up there. What we're actually going to do is select this one and then we're going to go over here and go to multiply. Hmm. Nope, I think I like it just like that. Maybe we'll drop the opacity down just a little bit. So it's not quite so in your face. There we go. That looks good. And that's that. That concludes today's tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. It means so much to me. Make sure to smash the like button before you leave. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. Click this link right here. Or if you want more content like this right now, you can click on one of these two links or you can click on the link in the comment that is pinned below. Thank you so much. God bless. Stay safe. And we will see you in the next one.